responsibility to set aside today is Julius Guerra and his wife Hannah. So at this time, I also would like to ask all the organ deacons, elders, and pastors to join us on the stage as a sign of support. Now, we also would like to give you a little sample of what the Mission Council look like. And uh, the council consists of all the only deacons and elders and pastors. So during that time, we will be asking them some questions. So here we are, some of the questions that we would like to ask them so you uh, to get a taste of what it looks like. So I guess I will start with Sin. And then Sin, would you please share with us your call to IPC to serve as deacon? And then on the doctrinal, the doctrinal question is like, what does it mean to you, the believers, baptism? Uh, to me, I've been a Christian for more than uh, 25 years. Uh, I was not very active, but uh, during the past few years, I, I decided to uh, serve, uh, step up, serve a little bit in the in IPC, so it uh, was a few years ago. So when I was uh, approached to be a deacon a few years ago, uh, I, I was asking myself, right, uh, you know, a deacon is basically somebody who serves, right? So I'm, I've already been serving, so you know, so I declined actually uh, to be a to be a deacon as I was already serving. So uh, the past year or so, God has been pressing on me about this question about being a deacon. So, you know, God speaks to me in many ways. And one of the ways He speaks to me is to events in my life. And the message was very clear. God was telling me that, you know, being a deacon is actually obeying His command, number one. And number two, being a deacon is actually a commitment. It's an official commitment to be a servant, to serve. So that message was very, very clear. So when I was asked to be a deacon again, uh, I, this time around I decided and I obeyed God's call because I don't want to be reminded again. Sometimes it cannot be. Sometimes it's not too pleasant to be reminded <laughs> by God. <laughs> okay, that's how I came. Uh, I decided to be a deacon. So the other one is the baptism. Baptism is actually our public confession of our faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, Jesus, in the Great Commission, commanded us to do so. So uh, that is what baptism means to me. Thank you, Sims. And Kwame, can could you also please share us your call to ABCS Deacon as also on you know, the doctrinal questions of what does it mean to you, the Lord's Supper? Uh, yeah, so I've uh, been a Christian since uh, 95 and um, all along what has happened um, in my life is always meeting targets and um, doing things and ticking boxes. So um, so after that I taught Sunday school, uh, led Bible study, uh, hosted small groups and all that. And it was all by my own effort. But it wasn't until about uh, 12 years ago that um, uh, God woke me up and there was a accident in the family and my daughter had a big accident and had to go for an emergency operation for three hours. And it was at that time I was uh, put in a position where I was, I had no control. I was totally lost and I was questioning God, why did, why did you put me in a position like that? And God spoke to me and said, just um, let go and let me work. And that was um, how I saw God brought angels and things into our past and uh, long story short, our daughter is fine. And, um, but uh, through that and various other events, um, God taught me to really let go and trust Him. So the call for God to me is to um, walk alongside other people because uh, life is full of unexpected twists and turns and to just journey along with different people. And um, uh, what does uh, the Lord's happen to me? Uh, uh, it's uh, remember.
remembrance of what Christ has done and his sacrifice for me, uh, for us. And it's also a great opportunity to uh, declare uh, as what Christ has shown us by his example through the baptism and the breaking of bread. It's also a great opportunity for us to, for me, to declare my faith and to show other people what I believe in. Thank you, Guangmeng. You know, Guangmeng and Sims are my, what we call it, 3 2 one uh, partnership program which is introduced by Guangmeng as well. To what it means is that three of us meet two hours uh, one time a month. And then I, sh I learn more a lot what you have just heard from now. But if you have a chance, talk to them and then get to know them. And then they will, they will give you some wisdoms that God has already uh, blessed them upon. So thank you. <coughs> and now, Joe. And uh, could you please also share your call to be a pastor for IBC? And also, I guess the doctrinal question may be a little bit harder for you. It's uh, uh, what does it mean to you, or what do you think? And uh, the questions when people ask, can a Christian lose their salvation? I became a Christian in February 23, 1997. One morning, our parents called us in the dining table and shared to us the gospel. And we found the three of us crying and really on our knees in repentance to God. And from that, we we got to serve we, together with our parents, going mission to different churches. They did our best to train us as we go and grow old. Apparently, I'm the hardest to train among the three. But God changed my life um, when I finished my nurse. I mean, I finished my nursing course in 2011. Um, I got implanted in my heart that I was there's something more that He wants for me. And I came to this seminar, and his name is Stuart Briscoe, and he gave uh, a sermon in this passage in Matthew 4:19, where it says, "Come." It's an invitation. Follow me, a life of discipleship, and I will make you fishers of men to pastor other people. And God really impressed me that I called for something more to full time ministry. And from that, God provided school, God provided church, this wonderful church that I can serve in. And so that's how I, how I was called in ministry. Now, the question about can a Christian lose? Um, his salvation. Can a Christian lose his or her salvation? I think if a Christian can lose uh, his salvation, that cancels out a lot of passages in the Bible. Remember John 3, 16 says, um, whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. And eternal life is forever. Another one is um, Jesus said that uh, he give, God give good gifts and his gifts are eternal, are irrevocable. Another passage in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where it says, um, The old has gone, the new has come. And God cannot unrenew us when we become a Christian. And this, another passage we can see in John 10, um, where the assurance, the security of the believer, where it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, they follow me, and I give eternal life to them, and they will never per perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. So I think that's the security that we have when we come into Christ. Now that, that, now that doesn't mean that we need to be passive Christians. We are to be active Christians. Someone said, believe as if you cannot lose your salvation, but behave as if you can. Thank you. That's a lot of wisdom in there, Jody. Thank you. So ask the more question, harder one. Okay, one well, on the side. Uh, on the slide. Now, next week uh, uh, we go through the uh, our elders, new elders, Joseph and Adrian. Uh, they both they both have been asked questions during the ordination when they became a deacon many years ago. So now I just would like to ask Joseph just to share your call and to IBC to serve as the elder. I began my spiritual journey in IBC. I was baptized here in the first baptism service of this new church building 16 years ago. 
And since my work with God, I start to learn about His work, to understand what He wants me to do. And I realized that, that His work had transformed me. In my work with God, I experienced a lot of His presence. Uh, blessing sometimes may be in the form of suffering, but at the end, I realized that He is indeed His God's blessing to me. I was, I'm so grateful to God that uh, He had transformed me and He had um, blessed me so much. And I told God that, God, I will serve you. Whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. I, have, I was called to the deacon and I've been serving for six years. Uh, in fact, I'm thinking, okay, this year I should, I should step down, I should retire. But God had used uh, uh, through the eldest one and pastor uh, in my to uh, step up to serve as a deacon, as a sort of elder. And uh, as we know that uh, as an elder, you have greater responsibility, you have to um, you spend more time in your church. Uh, to oversee the spiritual life of the church and also to help them to, uh, to develop God's plan for IBC. So I told actually that uh, Riyani is the one who talked to me and I said, I, the word that God wants me to serve, I will serve. But hold on, let me talk to my wife first. Because my wife had been complaining to me that I do not spend much time with her <laughs> and now I'm going to spend more time with God. Uh, so, of course, I received my wife's support, and my wife is a god feeling woman. She told me that whatever God wanted to do, yeah, go ahead. And that's why today I'm here in the morning, standing in front of you, and that I just pray that um, you pray for the, uh, all the new deacons and elders, and also, uh, also new pastors, that we can serve God Thank you, Joseph. And, um, Henry and, um, yeah, but you also please share your call to my BC as well as an elder. He's an elder chair, by the way. And, and uh, also, what does it really mean to you, uh, the role of elders in IBC? Thank you. Um, our call to IBC, we've been in IBC for more than 20 years. In fact, uh, PC and I, we married in IBC. Uh, IBC has been our home. Now we want to see it to be home for the nations. IBC has been a place where we um, learned what it meant to disciple others and to be a disciple. And now it's a different season for us to learn how to make this part of the IBC DNA for all of us and not just for me and PC and them. And uh, in a different season. During the time that we were deacons, that I was a deacon, uh, it was busy, it was a lot of service. But now, as I transition into the next season of being a elder, uh, I realize that the mantle of overseer is such a heavy one. Um, if I had hair, it would, it would, it would be white. <laughs> <laughs> but as, a, as part of a member of the elder board, um, we are by um, regulation a board because it's part of the Charities Act in Singapore. And so the board has got to have an elder chair and, and, and pastor by our constitution cannot be, um, is, is a member of the board but not in a leadership position. So there's, a, there's mutual accountability and all that. But really what we function is a band of brothers. And we function as co-laborers and we function as uh, fellow servants upon whom um, the health of this community has been entrusted to. And uh, it's a heavy mental, and it means that we just have to prop each other up, especially Pastor Rodney, so that uh, we can all fulfill this function as, as well as we're able to. So it was a very reluctant step up for me. Um, but one thing I've learned from my time serving in the King's office in Bhutan is that when a king calls you, much less the king of kings, you do not say no. And in fact, you have to be fast. You have to be faithful. You have to be available. You have to be submitted, which was hard for me. 
and you have to be teachable. And that's what I've been learning so far. It's still a very steep learning journey for me and TC and my family. And we ask for your patience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edwin. Okay, you have heard all that, and then so um, the the pastoral stuff and the leadership team of IPC strongly recommend this man um, to be ordained as deacons and as elders and Pastor Jody as a pastor. And uh, so, all right, did I say did I miss anything? Okay. <laughs> Uh, our lot is here, so uh, right. So, if uh, you know, what we'd like you to do is, as we pray for them to confirm them, we also would like you to do the same thing and uh, reach out. First, is that you confirm that God has appointed them, has called them aside. Next, is that the church has also confirmed them and set them aside. So, if you like to do that, could you please stand? And perhaps you stretch your hand to lay your hand upon them, and then we can put the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we rejoice in all you have done in the lives of these men, ordained and affirmed today. Jesus called them, He taught them, and He greatly used them. And today they stand on the beginning of a long time of ministry. Father, with your power that works within them, we pray that you use them in a mighty way. And today, we also want to thank you for their parents, their grandparents, their spouses, their children, their loved ones, their friends, their teachers, their mentors, godly men and women who have built into the lives of these men preparing them uniquely for the occasion to which you're calling them for. Father, your word tells us that when you call us to do anything, you will always provide the resources needed. And may they grow deeply from the reach of what all of you grace. We also pray, Father, that you keep them, each one of them, give them a clean heart from the midst of this sinful world. May they shine their light in the midst of the darkened world. We pray that you use them with increasing effectiveness for your glory. We ask for your protection, the temptation and the discouragement that is in, in a bit of all in this mighty world. Help all of us to support them, to affirm them, to encourage and build them up. Father, we pray that you grant your servants a keen mind to understand your word as well as the strategy that will enhance its impact. Grant your servant a warm heart to hurt with those who are hurting and to weep with those who are weeping. Go before them, Father, lead them in a plain path to do your will and to do it cour courageously. So, my brother, Sin, Kwame, Joseph, Adrian, and Pastor Joey, we commit you to God, our Father in heaven. We commit you to the work of His grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all of those who are sanctified. We pray this in the name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. We now are going to present a certificate, which is a commemorable of this holy moment uh, in their lives. <laughs> 